Hello everyone and welcome back to another video tutorial on using Adobe Illustrator to design for Kindle Direct Publishing. If you like what you see here, please like and subscribe, post your comments and questions below, and please consider joining our Facebook group called the KDP Design Group. The link is in the description. Now although this group and this channel often focus on applying design concepts to the realm of self-publishing, this tutorial is perfect for anyone who wants to streamline their Illustrator workflow by customizing their workspace. Oddly enough, this has been my most requested video to date. People have seen the customized workspace in my videos and have asked how they can get that workspace for themselves. Now, I don't necessarily recommend that you use my exact workspace, and the reason is this. That would go completely against the entire reason I customized my workspace in the first place. I decided that I did not want any tools or panels visible in my workspace that I didn't know how to use. I also didn't want anything in my workspace that was not useful to the type of document or publication that I was currently working on. So I hope that you guys will keep those two things in mind when designing your own spaces. So here's uh, just a little bit about how my workspace is arranged. So I have two toolbars docked to the left side of my screen in single columns. Next to that I have another bar full of the various panels that I find most useful in my own workflow. Over here on the right I keep several groups of tools and panels undocked so that they can uh, easily be moved around as needed. These are the tools and panels that I find myself using the most often. As far as the tools go, I like to keep my three selection tools at the top. So I'm going to create a few shapes over here. And then with my selection tool, the black arrow, I can select individual objects. That is the tool that you're going to use the most often in Illustrator. Then we have the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow. This is used to isolate points. And then for example, I can use my arrow key to manipulate that point, move it around. And then below that we have the group selection tool. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to take my selection tool and I'm going to put a bounding box around these three shapes. I'm going to hit control G to create a group. Now let me come back to my ellipse tool over here. Back to my selection tool. And I'm going to create another group, control G. And now I'm going to grab both of these groups and group those together as well. Control G. So now if I come over to my layers palette, you'll see what's happening here under layer two. I have a group and below that I have two other groups. So if you notice if I select that top group, I can select my second group or I can select both of them together. So instead of going to my layers palette to do that, you can grab the group selection tool and if I click on an object, click once, that object gets selected. If I click twice, the group gets selected. And if I were to click three times, the entire group that has both of these groups in it gets selected. Now, I don't use that selection tool as often as the others, but it has proven to be indispensable, particularly when you have a very complex document and you have to isolate objects by groups. Beneath that, I have the Shape Builder tool, which we've used in a lot of the tutorial videos I've done here. So I'll select that group of objects. I'll click on the Shape Builder tool, and then I can come over here and start combining shapes. And below that, I have the Pencil tool, which I use to create freehand shapes. Okay, and I will increase the stroke so you can see it, and change the width profile. Now finally, in this toolbar over here, I have the four buttons that are normally by default over here on your toolbar to the left. So first we have the stroke and fill icons, which you go to select which one you're going to be working on to change colors. Below that we have these buttons that describe the type of color that is being used. So you have solid color, you have gradients, and then you have no stroke or fill. Below that we have drawing modes, which no most of the time you will be on draw normal. But if you ever want to draw behind an object, which I do quite a bit, you would go to draw behind. And draw inside can also be very useful. Now finally down here we have the view modes and normally I just switch between presentation mode and normal screen mode so we're in normal screen mode right now but let me show you what presentation mode does if I were to grab this shape take it off of the edge I'll do it with this group as well okay we can still see everything that's outside of our document but if I switch over to presentation mode you'll see what happens you view only what is going to be printed in your document so hit escape to return to normal mode. Hold the spacebar down to get this hand, drag my document to the left. I do that because I'm right-handed and I leave all this space for my hand so I don't accidentally press all these buttons I have here on the right. 
Now these four buttons can be found on any toolbar by clicking these three dots at the bottom, the Edit Toolbar button, and you'll see that they're down here. And so you check on and off which one of these buttons you want on that particular toolbar. If you come down here, I have another bar that has my most frequently used panels, and those are the Layers panel, which you've seen me look at already the navigator panel which is a convenient way to navigate your entire document below the navigator I have my watches panel where I select my colors for my stroke and fill and I can also choose which I'm focusing on the stroke or the fill the final two panels that I keep undocked on the right side of my screen are the symbols panel which you see here and the graphic styles panel okay so the symbols panel you guys have seen before in my other videos is where I keep all of my assets that I create here in Illustrator so when I pull up one of my uh, custom panels, I also dock that here with the symbols and with the graphic styles. Okay. You see I can just click and drag to my document from the symbols panel. And like I said, I have the graphic styles up here. It has some default graphic styles and I can also load it with custom graphic styles. So I can create a shape and then while it's selected click on one of my graphic styles and you'll see that it changes according to whatever style I selected. And again, I dock those up here with this toolbar. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to unstack tools because in your default workspace, you're going to have a lot of these tools stacked one on top of the other. So I'm going to switch to the Essentials Classic workspace, which is probably what you're using by default. So I'm going to click up here on the workspace menu and come down to Essentials Classic. And you'll see that you have these little white triangles next to a lot of the tools. That means when you click and hold, a bunch more tools are gonna pop up here for you to choose from. Now I have two problems with that. When I have tools stacked one on top of the other, I can never remember which tools are where. So I tend to just not use those tools that are hidden and probably end up doing more work than necessary by not utilizing the best tool for the job. And then two, I tend to not learn how to use any of the tools that are hidden because I don't see them and they're not readily available to me. So by unstacking all of my tools, it forced me to learn a whole slew of new tools that I never knew existed and it has made me a much more proficient designer. To unstack your tools in each toolbar that you have, you're going to want to click on the Edit Toolbar button here at the bottom, these three dots, and a list of all your tools is going to pop up. If a tool is grayed out, like these up here, it means that it is already somewhere in this toolbar, likely hidden underneath another tool. So this is not the most intuitive system in the world, but in order to unstack your tools, you'll first need to drag them to this list under the Edit Toolbar button. So I'll unstack some of these tools right now. So I'll take the Ellipse tool, drag it over here to my list. Now you see it changed to the Hexagon tool, or Polygon tool, I'm sorry. I'll drag that over here, now the Star tool. Okay, so now none of those tools are left over here. They're now back over here on this list. There they are, Ellipse, Polygon, and Star Tool. So at this point, I'm going to want to drag them back from the list onto my toolbar, except this time I'm not going to stack them. I'll grab the Ellipse Tool. I'll drag over here. You see that blue line that appears between the tools? You let go there, and now you have your individual tool unstacked. I'll grab the Polygon Tool and do the same thing. Wait for the blue line in the middle and let go, and now you'll see I have my unstacked tools there. Using the same method, you can stack your tools in a customized way, but my personal preference is to have no hidden tools at all. So once again, I recommend only having tools and panels in your workspace that you know how to use. If there are any panels you don't see on your workspace, you can find them up here under the window menu. While you're working, you can easily give yourself more space for your document by toggling the tab key, which will hide and bring back your tools and panels. Finally, once you have everything set up the way you want, you'll need to come back to the workspace menu at the top so you can save and name your new workspace for future use, and you can create as many custom workspaces as you want. So thank you for watching, guys. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.